<laughs> okay. Pardon me? You learned nothing. I hope that's not true, but anyway. So um, today we're just, this, this is where we're headed, right? Is um, We want to review a little bit about natural logs because that kind of tends to slip our mind. Um, we also want to recognize the chain rule for logs here. So that's when we have a function. And I'll show you what that looks like. We'll get started with, with that idea in mind. Like if we were to look at this first example here, um, we'd probably say to ourselves, oh, I can see a function and I can see the derivative for that function. This looks like it's going to be a substitution or chain rule question, right? And we'd go, okay, well, u is x cubed plus x and the derivative for u would be 3x squared plus 1. Oh, it can't get any better than this because they're perfectly right on my page. But... Um, I don't even need a constant multiplier, right? Everything is ready to go. But the uh, function here, it has the exponent uh, negative one. So it would be a mistake to use the power rule because it won't work. We'll be at the function to zero, which would be one. It would disappear. So we got to remember that when we hit that situation, we're actually talking about a natural log. So what we would do is we would do the natural log of the function here, and our antiderivative would become natural log of x cubed plus x and a constant. If you were to take this derivative, you would end up back where we started. Question? Does the absolute value matter? The absolute value does matter because we can't log a negative, so it is in there on purpose. Or yes? It did on the quiz. <laughs> <laughs> if you forgot it on the quiz, uh, I, I'm probably going to be fairly lenient about that, but know that this is the, this is the correct answer with absolute value brackets. Um, things like adding a constant also, that is the correct answer. If you forgot adding a constant, I, I won't be uh, too mean about it this time around, but by the end of our course, I will be pretty rigid as we get closer to that AP exam. <laughs> yes? So every natural log is going to be a... Absolute value. Sometimes we don't need it. Like, for example, if you had, like, natural log x squared, we could chuck that. If you had natural log of um, 2 to the x... There's no negative numbers that come out of those things. So sometimes we just throw the, the uh, absolute value brackets out. But most of the time it, is, it would be there. So again, uh, if we look at the next example, um, you see the same situation. The function and the derivative. And it's going to appear like a fraction because the function is to the negative one. So my substitution, I probably would have made this tan x. My derivative would be secant squared x. And that means since it fits into the pattern, I'm going to be taking the natural log of that function. So the natural log for the tangent of x, that's going to have the derivative. If we take this derivative, I'm going to end up back where I started. So if we keep finding the pattern this way, we can do things pretty quickly. For example, in the next one, you probably say to yourself, OK, this looks like a good choice for the function it would have a derivative of 2x plus 2. So what am I missing? I'm missing a 2, which means I need a half in front. So in this case, the multiplier I would have in front is a half. So here's my function. My multiplier is a half. So the uh, antiderivative is going to be the natural log x squared plus 2x plus a constant. All right, so I'll give you a minute. Try the next one and see if you can do that. And then we'll uh, recap it together. OK, so uh, let's see here. 3x plus 2. So what I'm missing is the 3. So I'll put in the 3 here, which means I need a 1 third out front. So the multiplier will be 1 third. And 3x plus 2 is the function. So that would be my antiderivative for this uh, example we just worked on. Okay. So for the uh, next three, we're not going to work through this table step by step. See if you can recognize uh, the pattern. And again, you may need more steps. You may need less. But uh, see what kind of shortcuts you might be able to take from this for those next three there. OK, so um, it might be easiest if you just took the 1 half out. Then it's easy to see this one. It's going to be 1 half natural log of x. You could go about it other ways, but I think that's maybe the faster one. 
If I think ahead as to the function on the bottom, derivative on the top, I'm missing a 4 up here, which means I'm going to have a 1 quarter out front. So the constant multiplier is a quarter, natural log 4x minus 1 plus a constant. Again, if I think ahead in the next one, it's going to be a 2x, so I'd have a 1 half in the front. So I should end up with natural log x squared plus 1 plus a constant for this antiderivative. So the next thing we'll take a look at once we get, you know, a refresher that we may need to use the natural log um, is to take a look at perhaps we run into a question where we have no idea where to start. Um, so what, what will we do in the situation when uh, we don't know uh, where to begin? If you have these two polynomials, uh, long division is one thing you could do with them. So I'm going to review the long division, and then I'll show you. Uh, it's possible to do this question without it, but uh, let's get a fresh slide just so I can jog your memory about how long division works. Um, so this would be the statement that I'd have written out, and I'd have uh, x squared plus x plus 1. And we line up the first two significant terms. Um, that's going to be 1. Um, so that means I'm going to have x squared plus no x's plus 1, and what I'm left with after I subtract is going to be a um, x minus no x's is just an x. So the way I could rewrite this is x squared plus x plus 1 divided by x squared plus 1 is equal to 1 plus x over x squared plus 1. Okay, There are some questions in the homework that will require you to do a long division first. You'll recognize it because you'll get to the question and go, oh, there's no more pattern. I don't know what to do. Oh yeah, Mr. Joyce told us to do this. So hopefully you have better reasons to remember it when it comes to the test. <laughs> but uh, anyways, this is what we come up with for an alternate form that is equivalent. Um, the other way you could do this common sense wise is if I look at x squared plus x plus 1. It may not always work this nicely, but you can think about it like this. And then life becomes better if I was to split it into these pieces. So we end up with the same thing, it's just that we didn't have to do long division to get there. Okay, so this is the integral that I'm going to use. Um, now I can see this has the natural log pattern, and that's almost my favorite integral. Not quite, but it's, it's not too bad to work with. So I'm going to switch this. This is the integral of 1 plus x over x squared plus 1. So that's the integral of dx plus the integral of x over x squared plus 1. And if I think ahead, there would need to be a 2 here. So I'm going to put a half in front. That means now I can start integrating. This will be um, just x. And the piece here is going to be a natural log. Um, so 1 half natural log x squared plus 1. And as Eamon pointed out, um, which is a good, uh, good thing to notice, you wouldn't have to write that with the, the straight brackets. You could also write it like this because it is always positive. You could simplify it a little bit more to look like that. Okay, so last one. Um, this is just to give you an idea that uh, sometimes you may run into a couple of our techniques. Like, for example, to start this question, you probably wouldn't be thinking about doing uh, natural logs, but you'd probably be thinking about substitution. So why don't we try that then? Um, the substitution that we'd probably be inclined to make would look like this. So I can rewrite my integral now using all those pieces. I'd have um, the integral of 2u minus 1 
And on the bottom, I would have u squared du. So let's see what pieces I have here now. Um, I have 2u over u squared minus uh, the integral of 2 over u squared. So one of them I can use power rule. The other one, you could simplify it and you could use, uh, you're going to need a log regardless. But at this point, you'll probably recognize, here's my derivative, here's my function. So we well, can just leave it the way it is. There's, there's no need to simplify it. We could go right from that step to um, the natural log of u squared. Um, I had to distribute. That's a good question. I had to distribute it. I'm running out of room, so I tried to skip that step. So at two u, then minus two. So the uh, it'll be natural log of u squared for this first piece here, and then I'm going to take away from it. Um, well, this will be two times u to the negative one over negative one. And um, let's see here. So I could tidy this up a little bit more. That'll be natural log of u squared um, plus 2 divide by u. And to us, this is where we started. Say that one more time for me. It's OK? OK. Um, so uh, let's see here. Where are we now? All right. So now we are just at the spot where we have to make that substitution again for u. So this is going to be natural log of x plus 1 squared plus um, 2 over x plus 1 plus a constant. And yes, we could get rid of those absolute value brackets since the value is always uh, squared there. Yeah, you could move the 2 to the front if you wish as well. Uh, that may be another way you see the answer in the textbook right now. OK. So that's what we're practicing today is the theme is on natural log integration.